<laughs> Sorry guys. Wow. Um, yeah, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be learning about WebRTC, which is um, real-time communication framework for web browsers. I'm not sure who made it, but I know, I'm pretty sure that Discord uses it. And Discord is like very scalable, like many, many users concurrently, they can show video, audio, it's just really well done. So why aren't I using that technology? Well, it's because I've never used it before. So we need to learn how to use WebRTC. Real-time communication. With WebRTC, you can add real-time communication capabilities to your application that works on top of an open standard. Now this page is by Google developers, so I, I feel like Google is like very invested in WebRTC as well. Um, and they, Google has some of the best developers in the world, so that's um, pretty promising. All right, let me, sorry, I'm just gonna double check that my stream is working on these other platforms. Seems like we have some issues here. Always some technical issues, but we get through them. That's our job. That's what we do as a software engineer. Um, okay. Yep, okay, looks like it's working. Get the chat open. All right, we're sweet. We are sweet. Um, yeah. So what can WebRTC do? It can make um, basic web apps that use the camera or microphone to more advanced video calling applications with screen sharing. We have gathered a number of code samples to better illustrate the technology. Awesome. Let's have a look at the samples here. Get user media. So I think this is just for getting user media. It might not work because I already have my camera. Oh, it does. Look, boom. This is getting the camera that I'm using and displaying it here in this web browser. Very cool. Let's check out the next sample. Get user media with Canvas. OK, so they've got the same webcam, but now we have this HTML canvas, this canvas element. Let me bring that down here. And it seems like we can take a snapshot. So let me make a peace sign, take snapshot, boom. And now in that canvas, it took that frame when I press that button. So that's pretty cool. Um, I kind of want to do this as a first step for my app. So I'm not sure many of you guys have seen my previous video, but I made a full stack web application just using my phone called fanfan.link. Fan, oh no, fanfam with an N first, fanfam.link. Um, it's not the best name, but it's essentially, it's just this button. And when you click it, it'll tell you how many times the button has been clicked. So we can just keep increasing it by clicking the bottom. And it's been clicked 97,000 times, more than 97,000 times, which is ridiculous. And I doubt that any human or any combination of humans has done this. There's definitely someone from my audience that had some script or some auto clicker or something and just <laughs> clicked this. Because I think in the first day I posted that video, it shot up to like 53,000. So. Someone, I think, set up a script to, sh to click it 50,000 times or a combination of people. Um, yeah, so this is cool, this Get User Media. I might try it on the web app that I've made. So let me show you guys this. I'm just going to move some things around here. Um, this is like a planned document that I made, but if I open the file explorer you can see here is the front end um, if I open the terminal let's navigate to the front end and I can just run this I think with npm on start let's see yeah that looks pretty good it should run that button click thing um, I think it's just in app.js. If I just remove this for now, um, you can see it's a very simple application. On click, says you've clicked me. 
count time if the when the count is returned. And on the click, it'll send a fetch request, a post request to the server, and get the text from the response and set count to the response text. So I'm going to change this. Oh, you can see here it's running. Click me. Oh my days, <laughs> what is this error? <laughs> Cannot post. Huh, maybe it doesn't work locally. What was the error? 404. Wait, is that from a click? Slash undefined. Oh, I think I have to be running the server locally for this to work. Hmm. WebSocket. That's interesting. Not sure if I got this working locally before or not. Let me see if I can change some things. So I was following this um, this tutorial, sst.dev. This is the framework that I'm using to make the full stack serverless app. And I was using their React app tutorial. So let's see if um, I need to run the backend locally or something. PM run start. Okay, so this is where I run the React.js app. Let's see if before that we did any API running over oh, here. NPM start. Hmm. I don't know if that'll actually fix it, and I don't think it will, because that's also a deployed dev environment. But we'll try it anyway. See what that does. While that's doing that, I'm going to see if we can look at these samples. Does it come with a code? Codes available on the GitHub suite. Um, where? SRC? No. Probably is SRC actually. The hell? Canvas record? Calculate the correct set. What was it called? Get user media with canvas. Hmm. Okay, those are samples, but do they have like a guide? They have this code lab we could be using. Oh, so this starting live lambda dev. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to see if my um the web app works now that uh, was it not on 3000 it is on 3000 why did not oh. now that i've set up the nope still getting this error undefined i wonder why it's undefined is it because this is undefined let me try console log this Yeah. It is undefined. React app API URL. That was probably in the uh, tutorial. Here, why am I? Why do I have two windows? 
here. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna search. Whoa. What is that? React app API URL. That is defined in mystack.js. Mystack.js. Um, no, no, it's here. It's here. Yeah, for some reason, this environment variable is undefined. Um, I don't know how this works and at what point this is run and whether or not I can log some stuff here. I'm going to try. Yo, and then let's try to log out these environment variables. API dot, what is it? Custom domain URL and API dot URL. And do another yo, but with the team at the front. All right, let's see if we can see any of these if I run it, the front end. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Oh, wait, what was that, what was that? Oh, it clears it. Ah, oh, so annoying, what? What, what if I do it in Commander? Let's have a look. Oh, thanks for the light, likes, die part zero. <laughs> die part is a nice name. Um, let's make this bigger for you guys. I was gonna call this at best fans at the start, but um, I think it was really hard to get that domain, so we've settled with fan fam for now. I did see something get logged before it got cleared, so I'm trying to see if I can see that in this console. Oh, I didn't go to the front end. Well, we can, oh yeah, look here. So the first thing is undefined. Where are we? Custom domain URL. But the URL is token token 6262, which I find so weird. Wait, so if I run the front end now. Wait a sec. Site URL. If I go to this, will it work? Oh my god, that's so hard to. So hard to copy. Okay. Cloud front. Oh. No, still error. I wonder if I deploy this now, will it break everything? Or was there something on this? Like, why is this environment variable undefined? Let's see what Google says. People have been saying u.com is good for searching for like programming problems. I've never tried it before. So let's have a comparison of um, Google and u.com both searching for the same thing, right? So what am I searching for here? SST environment variable react app undefined. Let's compare the results. Whoa. Okay, straight away you can see that u.com has these cards for Stack Overflow, which is pretty sweet. You can see the answer straight away. Or you can press this pill and see the question. That is very cool, so you don't have to actually go in. And you're possibly able to see multiple. Well, right here, there's only two, but I'm not sure what the, maybe it stays to two. 
go next question that is pretty cool I might start using you.com for at least programming questions I'm not sure what else it's good at but I've heard yeah it's good for programming questions all right so after Stack Overflow we get all Stack Overflow from Google as well is it the same we get different questions actually the first question is different um that's interesting oh so this is actually searching for something else what if i still different question and then after stack overflow this shows sst.dev okay that's the same sst.dev and then no they're all different results this is pretty cool all right so i'll spend like five minutes on each let's see if i can get an answer with Eva. So first with Google, um, I'd probably just like, I have a bad, I don't know if it's a bad habit, but I think it's like, works out a lot of the time for simple questions of clicking the first link without really analyzing the second or third link that much. Um, and then straight away, you can kind of tell if this is going to be answering your question or not. And I can tell that this isn't really SST related from this question, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, um, but I can see that that's pretty much the same with with the u.com result as well neither of them are SST related so a thing you can do with Google at least is if you put any of these keywords in oh shit if you put any of these keywords in quotation marks um, it I'm pretty sure it means that like it the results have to include that keyword. So I'm going to try that with both and let's see how the results change. Okay, so now we're getting actually SST related results from u.com. Like the first result is now sst.dev. But. GitHub is the first result for Google. And I don't know, the new SST? Let's see. I want to see how relevant this is. Because it doesn't seem that relevant. SST. Oh no, this is exactly what we're using. What the hell is FWIW? For wow information. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm going to Google that real quick. For what it's worth. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. For what it's worth, we looked at this problem while using Create React App with a serverless backend in SST. Here's roughly how we solved it. On the backend, allow defining React environment variables using the outputs from the backend. That is literally exactly our code. Um, okay, spit out config file. Oh, this is it. I think this is my issue. If I open package.json in the front end you can see yes my start script is just the basic react scripts start where it actually it should be sst env dash dash react script start and that will probably inject the environment variables for us and solve all our problems so let me run npm run start again and see if that error message is now gone where is our nope. yes well we have an error sst.env is not recognized as an internal or external command no no is it because I didn't install this I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Let's see, if it says it added the package, that's probably why. So we needed this. Uh, added two packages, yeah, shit. We needed this um, npm package, serverless stack, static site env to actually be able to run this thing. And I don't know how the hell I got it to deploy last time then. Super weird, anyway. Seems like it ran no problems this time. 
Let's see if the click works. Oh, oh. Let's see if the API was invoked. And return. It's super slow locally, but that doesn't matter. It's not like it's prod. Um, sweet. I'm going to change the thing where it says you clicked me and change it to the button has been clicked count time because it's not just one person clicking the button anymore when it's live it's everyone it's the whole fan fam excellent I'm gonna change bird to this sweet all right this button has been clicked X times okay now let's see if I can deploy this to prod without breaking anything <laughs> Um, let me just quickly show you guys my prod link so far fan fan fam dot link um, very similar I clicked it it says you clicked me and then the count times now I've just made a very simple change to the text this button has been clicked count times I want to deploy this to prod in theory it should just be one command and super simple so I'm gonna try that I don't know if in practice you know how software programming is you get a lot of errors so yeah npx sst deploy stage prod um there we go let's i'm gonna leave that i think this might take a little while i'm gonna go get a drink um hang in there guys i'll be back in about i don't know like three minutes maybe less um yeah have I'll see you guys soon. Alright, I'm back, but it's still deploying, so give that some more time. Um, put my camera back up. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Um, thanks for the likes, 010120 user. Really appreciate it. Hello, hi, 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 hello, hi, hi. <laughs> All right. Um, so the plan: learn Web RTC. I'm just gonna fill out some more of this plan while this is deploying. Um, let me get a little compilation. What is Web RTC? With Web RTC, you can add real time communication capabilities. From basic apps that use camera to more advanced video sharing. Boom. And now people can see that. Is that too much? I think it's like one too much. There we go. Oh. Shit, I think I've been. Is that okay? Yeah, seems fine. Oh gee, never mind. Just I've been using the wrong window sizes it seems, but it's all good now. Still waiting on this to deploy. Oh, it's done. That doesn't look like the prod link, but let's see. 
Let's see if it worked. Um, where is my win? Here we go. Fan fam dot link. Okay, so now if this prod deployment worked, when I clicked it, it should say this button has been clicked X times. Yeah, sweet. Flawless victory. Excellent. Okay, now let's close all of these windows we don't need. So many of them. <coughs> and um, we'll go back to the web RTC getting started. So we can close this. Okay. WebRTC getting started. Oh, thanks Paris Hilton's drug dealer for the likes. I appreciate it. Um, yep. Firebase example. Okay, I want to see if I can use this um, code lab example without having to set up a Firebase project. So I'm going to skip all of the Firebase stuff. Get sample code. Firebase install run the local server <laughs> this is all firebase stuff oh so they're making a full chat thing huh do i want to go that far not really i kind of want to like let's go that i kind of want to just do this like this isn't web rtc yet but it's like get user media which is getting your webcam um and audio from onto the web browser and then very simply take a snapshot. Um, it'd be cool. I want to do that on fanfan.link. Get people to take snapshots and host them on the website. I know it's, it could be dangerous. People could upload some weird photos, but whatever. Let's be a bit disruptive. Let's, let, let's have some fun. Um, so I'm going to Google if there's like a tutorial on this. Get user media canvas snapshot tutorial taking still photos with get user media sweet <laughs> uh, let's look at their demo it should be the same thing right whoa this isn't a demo this is code oh here we go demo nope this is still the code that's not really what I expected when I said demo okay um, let's read through this. Um, uh, um, HTML interface, camera, video stream not available, take a photo, JavaScript code, get media devices. Okay, maybe we should just look at the code. Okay, so what do they have in the HTML? They have a video tag. And a take a uh, photo button, a blank canvas, and the output image. Okay. And then a bunch of CSS. What about the JavaScript? A bunch of variables. One method show view live results button. Ensure that our document is in frame. Remove the content area, view live results of example code above. Startup, here we go. Navigator.media devices, get user media. Okay, so this is what we want. Navigator.media devices. Interesting. Video. Oh, so they get the the DOM element and then they set the SRC object to this stream value which they get from devices. that's pretty cool let's try do that okay let's copy their video element to save us time typing it out go into our code uh, with this app.js um, you know what I'm gonna do good practices and create a new file in a components folder I'm gonna call it video stream video stream or webcam video, let's just call it video stream dot JS oh shit what happened I have like my NeoVim messes up my 
Explorer in VS Code, so I have to do a lot of things just through Windows Explorer, which is pretty annoying, but whatever. Components. And then new text doc video. What was I calling it? Video stream? Yeah, video stream. Stream dot. Yes. Yes. Cool. Um, now we can open that. I have a snippet for creating a functional React functional component. Call it video stream, and we're gonna paste in that video DOM element here. Sweet. Whoop whoop whoop. Um, we're gonna. So in in vanilla javascript it's pretty common to use these um query these like selectors or get element by id to select um dom elements but in react ideally you want to use use ref so i'm going to do that here it is just go const video ref equals use ref and then you just set null for the initial value um, and then in the doc in the actual DOM element you go ref equals whatever you call the um, the reference variable so video ref in this case and now uh, when we want to kind of run something every time something changes or at the start just once at the start of the initialization of a component we use use effect um, I've heard some people say you don't need use effect sometimes, but I see no harm in just using it all the time for running functional code on initialization of a component. Um, you s put the second parameter as an empty array, which um, just makes it run only at the start, the initialization of the component. In um, other circumstances, you can put other hooks and different variables in here and then it will run this whole use effect function every time that variable changes but here we just want to run it at the start we want to use this where is this this um, code here that will hopefully haven't tried it before but hopefully get the users um, video information right so i'm going to change this video to video ref here and here and then that could be it we just have to go back into app.js and actually import this video stream oh my god so many typos today video stream okay am i still running that front end Oh, we have an error. What is it? Module not found. Video stream falls outside of the project SRC. Oh, okay. Oops. So this should be in SRC. Uh, let's update import, see if that works. Did it? Yeah, sweet. Okay. Do we still get the error? Um, no, excellent. Let's see. Oh, it's asking me to use my camera. This is a good sign. Allow, but it doesn't show the camera. Let's see if the video component is here. Oh, yeah, it's here. That's good. It doesn't seem to have. Hmm. Okay, we get we're getting there. There's no Oh, video ref dot play is not a function. Interesting. Video not play. Um let's Google some stuff. React let's do you dot com. I've been I've been liking this. React um video use ref play. See what see what they're saying. Here we go. How to use React Ref to call a video play.
here's a working example. Let's have a look at how they've done it. Right, where's the code? Where's the JavaScript? Here we go. <laughs> There's, it just doesn't work. They've done the same thing. Stitch up. Let's have a look at some more questions. To be honest, this card format is like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not used to it, but it's kind of hard for me to read. Because, like, I can't scroll it. Can I? No, this is open side panel. What's this? Whoa! This is pretty cool. I'm liking this. Um, new servers serve MP4. Huh, doesn't really help. What if I Google the the method? I don't think that'll work either. No, I think that what we searched before was better. I'm gonna go back to Google. Use ref um, video play. How do we do this? First result is a code sandbox. I wonder if it's the same one. Nope, this is different. Look, oh nice. See, they've got a video ref as well. They set the current SRC. What do I set? I set something different. I set SRC object. Oh, dot current. Okay, sorry. So that's another thing. I, this is actually probably why. Um, you need to use dot current with references to get the actual reference. I don't know why you'd ever not use dot current. I feel like it should be default, but anyway, it doesn't matter too much. Um, where is my app? Oh, sh it, there it's working yeah we did it we got the video running on our react app excellent now let's um we'll style it later we're just gonna make we're just gonna try do the the screenshot the capture the button to take a picture um let's try that so Where do they do that here? Take picture. Take picture. Canvas. Don't get context. Okay. Uh, video stream. Now I'm thinking here, like, do I make this capture button on a separate component? I think I should, just by the way that I've name this component video stream it wouldn't make too much sense to also have um the whole button and canvas here because it's it starts becoming more than just a video stream it becomes a whole photo booth so i'll probably make another component but the downside to that is now we have to start um, considering how we actually send information to and from all the components um, like for instance the data from this video component for the actual image how do they get it here video so they send the reference from the video into context dot draw image um, which is kind of annoying to do with props. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to keep everything in the video stream component for now. Um, okay, so let's let's have a look here. Um, ba -ba -bum, here's our video element. We're going to create a canvas element. Uh, which I'll need a ref for and we're going to create a button
which will take a photo. I'm going to create a method called take photo, which will do all the photo stuff. Okay. Let's look at their code. Paste it here. Context equals canvas ref dot current. Get context two D. If width and height. Huh. Huh. Ooh. Hold on. Can I set? Hold the phone. Can I set a vi uh, height and, oh my God, why is this covering it? Yeah, nice. I'm gonna try just a height uh, height and width of 500. Actually, we should do less to the left, let's do 300. Um, just to see what that looks like. And then we can just hard code these values. I don't wanna get too complex with it. Okay, um, let's see if that looks okay in the web app. Oh, that's a lot smaller than I expected. So we'll do 400. Is that nicer? All right, we'll do 500. <laughs> um, okay, that's fine. And um, yeah, so we can just hard code these values here. Gonna remove all of this. Okay. Canvas ref dot current. This photo dot is set. Oh, okay, I assume this is a DOM element of image. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, probably photo image. Yep. Yeah. So we'll create that um, here. Image ref equals photo taken ref what else did they have on it do I need all that they had a bunch of shit alt I mean this is good for accessibility oh fuck it we'll edit alt your your photo taken your taken photo and we'll add the ref here Photo taken ref. Okay. What is this complaining about? Redundant alt attribute screen is, is, is you don't need to use the word photo or image. Oh, oh man. I'm gonna say your selfie. That's a really annoying warning in my opinion, but I like I get what they're trying to do, but um, yeah, whatever. Okay, is that it? Do you think that'll work? Let's see. Let's see, take photo. Oh shit, it did it twice for some reason. What if I do it again? <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, it's working too well. There's too many images. Why is that? Why is there two? Oh, one's the canvas. One's the canvas and one's the actual image. Um. <laughs> There's probably a few ways to fix this. Let me just do some testing. Like, I, I wanna see if I can fix this without making a hook. Actually, I probably think I need to make a hook. Um. Hmm. Um, I 
Oh yeah, fuck it, we'll just make a hook. I can't be bothered thinking about a good solution. Um, buh, 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 buh. quickly make a React hook here. We're gonna call it Photo Taken. Oh, fucking autocomplete. Photo Taken. Dude, that's actually a pretty annoying. And then we'll set it to null. So the import use state here, which doesn't seem to be working. So we'll do it manually. And um, when we set this, we're gonna go set photo. Why is all my autocomplete just stop working? All right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna restart VS Code. Uh, shit, I don't know if that will actually even work. Yeah, yeah, it will. It will work. Best friends. Okay. Photo taken. All right, sweet. Set photo taken. Um, we'll just set it to true. It doesn't. We're not actually using it now. Um, and now we can kind of hide all this. if the photo isn't taken. So if the photo is taken, then we can show the image and uh, kind of same with the canvas. No, actually, can we hide the canvas? I don't think I ever want to show that. Style this way. Display none? No, visibility. How do you do that? Hold on. Shit, hold on. Visibility hidden. Okay, visibility hidden. Okay, let's see if it hopefully should only show. Oh shit, oh, I need to rerun. Rerun the front end. Because I restarted VS Code. It's all good. Um, this is looking promising. So I think in the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to try, oh, I don't know, maybe too ambitious, next hour, try to set it up so that we can have people taking selfies and it showing on fanfam.link. That would be really impressive. So let's try that. Why is this taking so long? Waiting for SST to start. Z, 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 Z. All right, so I guess while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna change up the plan here because that's all old plan new plan I'll show you guys on TikTok this making a new plan here uh, first use um, configure react app to be able to take selfies from webcam Take selfies. And this is done. Two. Enable ability to upload selfie and show on web app for others. Doing now. Okay, sweet. Why is this taking so long? 
Waiting for SST to start. I'm gonna Google that. I feel like this shouldn't be taking this long. Handling long duration of SST. The first time I did this, it took like 20 seconds. What? Okay, maybe I have to run SST first. Oh shit, I should probably move this. Still waiting. What? Oh, there we go. About time. All right, look. We have the web app, take photo. Aw, take photo. Hmm. Right, I'm gonna remove the visibility false thing I added to the canvas. Maybe that's messing things up. Let's have a look. Hey. Well, that just shows the, is that the canvas? I think that's just the canvas. Sure. Yeah, that's the canvas. The actual image is still hidden. Hold on. I'm gonna move that back to photo taken. No, no. Except photo taken in the true. Oh, is it because of the ref? Hold on, what if I do it in the opposite order? Oh, at least it shows. Hmm, visibility hidden things not probably probably the reason. Nope, that's not even the reason. Do we even need the image? I feel like we don't. We don't even need this. I'm just gonna remove all this. Um we'll comment that out. Comment that out. What's this complaining about? Oh, because I deleted it? Yeah. All good, okay, take the photo, sweet. The dimensions are different. I mean, I think this is actually 500 by 500, but my video is, mm, it's not scaled to, like the aspect ratio is auto. Aspect ratio, that doesn't change. Whatever, that's fine. Karen 300 n thanks for joining the live. Please, please feel free to ask any questions. I'm currently making a React app to be able to take take selfies, and then now I've already done that. I'm gonna be able to upload the selfies to an S3 bucket, hopefully, and um, have it live on fanfam.link for other people to join. I mean, to see. Razzle Dazzle, thanks for joining the live. Welcome. All right. Um, Let's see, how do I upload this now? All right, before I do that, I'm gonna just save what I've done so far on GitHub, upload, go git add. Actually, I'm gonna use fork for this, because I like fork, it, it's just like a GUI for git. Makes it a lot easier to see all my changes here. Let's have a look. So I made this new video stream component, which pretty much does everything for the video, no libraries used, it's just off 
basic um, JavaScript API, imported the video stream to the app.js, fixed some issues with SST, and added this plan. Okay, let's go. Commit message. I heard a good tip from JavaScript Wiz that was like when you're writing a commit message, it should be in the format of this commit will, and then what you want to write in that after this commit will is what the commit message should be. So like this commit will add um, video component, video stream component. You don't have to actually write this commit will because, but yeah, that's just like one way to think about it. Commit and push, and now our changes are saved for us to be able to roll back to or access later. <coughs> Sorry, Let me just take some water here. All right, so now I want to see how can we upload this to S3. Let's see if Google can answer that for me. Oh, she. Okay, Google. Uh, no, that actually opened up my Google Assistant, which I didn't want. Um, SST upload image to S3. Yeah. Okay, upload to S3. Oh, use this page in Korean. Brad Hall 20, thanks for joining the live. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, so AWS Amplify, do we already use that AWS Amplify? Nope, we do not. We do not use that yet. We did install some, um, some AWS library i'm not sure what it was let's have google here aws sdk hmm okay server hunter thank you for the likes i really appreciate it appreciate everyone following um really helps me out a lot gives me motivation to make these lives and videos streams help people learn about tech um we've been using this ssd sst a lot it's a really cool library to make full full stack applications from scratch really enjoying it um but um just learning new things every day like how do we upload to s3 easily this seems to be continuing from another guide here building a react app creating a note page Upload a file to S3. Um, so if we have a look at how our backend is defined, um, it should be all in stacks, pretty much. This is where the crux of it is, at least. Have a look here. You can see we've made a table equals new table and we've made an API can we make an s3 bucket in the my stack that's what I want to know and this doesn't kind of this doesn't really look like what I want I want something to be like let me just like s3 or storage but none of these seem to kind of be here so what if I Google serverless stack resources s3 what will it say here we go A aws resources configuration oh this is actually normal serverless no 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 no, no. we want sst okay maybe we have to do it like this that's kind of annoying. I feel like everything, like S3 is such a basic resource that it should be in the, in the, in like the SST kind of base library along with table and API. 
table API. Maybe resource. Yeah, it's definitely a resource. I don't know. Let's see. All right, create it. Oh, this is good. This is from scratch. Unlike that last tutorial, which seemed to like pick up halfway through, this one is from scratch. See, so like they create the SST app from scratch. That's good. We've already done that. Um, they got the stacks. Um, here, here we go. Bucket from resources. Excellent. That's what we want. So I'm going to move this here. You're not going to be able to see it on TikTok, but um, when I copy in the code, you will be able to see it. So we're going to import the bucket resource and we're going to go under the API. Well, actually, we'll do it up here so you guys can see it a lot better. I'm going to make a comment called create the bucket. I'm going to call it F3 bucket just, just so it comes up in more searches. I'm going to copy the whole code from that tutorial for now and I'll probably end up having to delete a bit because we already have it like stack.add outputs I feel like do we have that let's have a little search yep see we have that um, but we just got to add buckets to it bucket name and then we can delete the one we just copied bucket dot attach permissions it's cool we can keep that 19 all right all right so what do they say bucket equals new buckets stack bucket notifications is that what they've called it or let's have a look at the tutorial because i don't want mine to hold notifications but is this what they're creating in this example we resize images not really so maybe that's just a default thing Hmm. Let's see if I hover over this, will it give me more information? Not really. Um, do they have docs on the bucket method? Let's have a look at that. Is there a search? Bucket. Excellent. Bucket, scope. Bucket, minimal config, bucket, okay. S3, notifications. Oh. So, oh, I think for this tutorial, they're using kind of like a notification system to, as soon as something's uploaded, they'll, they'll go through and run this um, function, which is kind of a bit overkill. We just want to store an image. Um... So we'll just skip all the notification stuff. Just configuring the S3 bucket. Where is that? S3 bucket, bucket name. Seems kind of simple. So I'm going to remove all this notification stuff oh, oh, oh. and add this it's not happy with this stack why is it not happy argument of type s3 bucket is not assignable to the type bucket props s3 bucket does not exist in the type why so you're telling me they lied here Because it feels like they lied. <laughs> or do you have to use notifications? Huh. Fuck it. Fuck it like I tuck it. Fuck it, fuck it like I tuck it. Add notification. Dude, these guys really like notifications. This whole bucket doc is like about notifications what the hell like literally it's like you have to use notifications do they let's go back to the tutorial do they explain that we'll look at how to automatically resize images that are uploaded to s3 
Sam Hazelwood, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm just trying to learn how to upload an image onto S3 using SST. And they seem to do it with notifications in the example, but I don't really want to use notifications as such but it seems like maybe I have to yeah okay so that code creates an s3 bucket using the bucket construct we are constructing we are subscribing to the object created notification with a function where does it say object created oh here where is that yeah Recycle with a function this image resizing library is called sharp so we're going to use oh thank you for the likes the only dragotti I really appreciate it thank you for all the followers as well really appreciate it um, finally we're allowing our functions to access a bucket called with attached permissions okay I'm gonna remove all of this notifications and s3 bucket like can we just make a bucket without any fancy schmancy mm, it's not complaining so that's good is this the name what's the second second um parameter id mm. i'm gonna call it selfie bucket um okay so then in the tutorial they go into the function code oh the only dragotti you've asked the questions i just joined what are you working on yep okay so let me just give you a recap um i have i'm not sure if you saw previously i had i made this full stack application using sst it's very simple it's just a button when you click it it will tell you how many times the button has been clicked and this number is saved in a DynamoDB database on S3. So anyone can come to this link, click the button, and this number will increase. Um, and then now I'm trying to add functionality for a webcam here. This is what I've done so far. For you to see your webcam on this, you'd be able to take a photo and then another button to upload this photo onto S3, which is kind of like the file storage service from AWS. And then for everyone to be able to see that, well, whoever took the latest photo on the website, I think that'll be really cool and fun. Um, people could pro will probably upload some bad photos, but you know, you can just fix that by overriding it with your own photos. So that it should be fun to see. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. So you can see I've got the front end working now I just need to get the kind of uploading to S3 working, which is what I'm trying to figure out right now. Thanks for joining. I appreciate all the likes, comments. Um, if you can subscribe to YouTube, that would be really awesome. My YouTube link is in my um, bio on TikTok. Okay, back to this. So this is the functionality for the backend code, it seems. Um, I'm not sure if so this tutorial is all about them automatically resizing an image when it's uploaded I don't want to do all that I just want to upload the image so I'm not sure if I need all of this code so I'm trying to just read and learn and just see which bits I can take out and um, S3 handler and just use Darian DeVito thanks for joining the live feel free to ask any questions or anything um, that's it huh what does their front end code look like did they don't even have a front end code actually oh hmm Okay, we've made some progress. Like we've created the bucket. 
called selfie bucket. And now we want to, oh, we have another question here from the only Dragotti. How did you start learning programming and developing? Good question, Dragotti. Um, so my first um, introduction to programming was with this language called ActionScript, which is like very similar to JavaScript, but it was made for Flash games. And back in the day, um, there was this site called like Miniclip. And when I was in school in like, I don't know, like maybe like 2002 or something, we'd play like so many Flash games, um, which was like, they'd all look like this, like made by people. Um, not very high budget, but just you could use the software. But back in the day, it was owned by this company called Macromedia, but then Adobe ended up buying it. And now like... Flash has pretty much been def fully deprecated. There were so many cool games that you could just play in your browser. Like, you didn't have to download the game. Um, you could just play it. And I, I love these games. I love playing. Like, I finished my schoolwork really fast. Just it so is I a time of peril in an expanding world of technology. Magic. An ominous like force threatens to eradicate. It was, um, yeah, so I learned how to make, how to start programming this programming language for flash games and then my curiosity just developed from there from flash games to like apps websites robotics just follow your curiosity like that's that's it you don't want to spend time working on something that you don't like i mean at the end of the day work is work but it can get boring but the more you enjoy it the better you're going to do so just follow your compass i'd say Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, let's see if I can find any more docs on uploading to SS, uploading to S3. Um, I think I can just do it from the front end now. These permissions. Um, allow API to access the table. Oh. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to figure this out by myself. Oop. I'm going to do one more Google SST React S3 upload. Ooh. This looks interesting. Another question from Dragotti. What do you recommend for beginners to start learning and practicing programming? Yeah, that's a good question. No, don't don't be sorry. I'm like I'm here to help and um, answer questions. I'd love I love doing that. Um, for beginners, like this goes back to what I just said. Like go. Do something you enjoy. There's many different ways of um, learning programming, but if you enjoy it, that's the best. So, like, what do you want to make? For me, it was it was games. So, I think a really good way to learn is just by YouTube. Um, just YouTube a tutorial, like you. Fucking hell. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I'd say like. I, I really love JavaScript, so if I was starting again, I'd be like JavaScript, like beginner JavaScript game. And then here, beginner JavaScript Pong, 40 minutes. Or here, even the easiest JavaScript game ever. This guy's made a video in nine minutes. What's up, guys? Nice Rick is here coming at you. Um, a game using just JavaScript, it seems, on your browser which is super simple. Like you don't need to download all these big like Android Studio or like Visual Studio, like Python with JavaScript. You just need a text editor and you can like make games in your browser. It's so cool. And just with this, you'd learn so much like CSS. Um, yeah, I think he's pretty much recreating that like 404 game with the dinosaur jumping. So yeah, just stuff like that. You want to make games as well. well. Excellent. Yeah. Just start making games now. Make like programming games is actually 
a lot more functionally difficult than um, like just normal websites and stuff but if you learn how to make games and I think if you're interested enough in games then you will pick it up a lot faster than websites as well I definitely recommend that um, just get straight into it another like good um, if you want to get real serious um, look at like Unity um, which is like a game engine or Unreal Engine it might be a bit harder but if you just look at like the most basic tutorials this like the problem with this is it stops being about programming and starts being more about how to use the actual software like Unity or Unreal Engine um, they're two of the most popular gaming engines but if you want to make some serious games you can use those it, it might be a little bit more difficult but if you want even more beginner just like search beginner JavaScript game and I think that'll be really fun like if I was to start again I'd do something like that thanks for the questions Trigadi all right I'm gonna go back to trying to learn how to do this S3 thing feel free to ask any more questions I do not mind being interrupted at all all right so they create a bucket this is weird like why are they going through the UI to create the bucket when SST should be creating the bucket for you how do I feel about Unreal Engine 5 to be honest I'm not really too familiar with actual development on Unreal Engine but just looking at the stuff that's come out of it and the quality of the games that are developed on Unreal Engine it's obviously like the market leader it's obviously the best I'd probably invest in learning Unreal Engine over Unity but Unity on the other hand seems to be more like beginner friendly and easier to use and another hack that um, I should tell you about if you are going to get into game dev is to use the marketplace um, so I know Unity has a really good marketplace um, well it's, ca it's called the asset store where you can pretty much download like pre-built games and just edit those it's a lot easier to edit you know tinkering and you get like much better results just by like tinkering or one of these starter packs I made my first um, Android game using like this endless runner which one is the Skyline Skater yeah this is this is my first Android game I made Skyline Skater it got over 10,000 downloads I just got this um, endless runner game from the asset store and I changed the sprite to a skateboarder changed all the animations to skateboarding and like made it like skateboarding on top of rooftops and it did like reasonably well I made this like so long ago in 2014 I was still in university and it was just super fun and like a lot of the coding was done for me through the asset pack and I just had to kind of change some things here and there to make it more fu make it more like what I wanted to do so yeah, those are some tips there for you. Dragodi, I hope it helps out. Um, just following this tutorial. This doesn't really seem to be about serverless stack at all. No worries, Dragodi. Have a thank you for the questions. Huh. Um, is this this is interesting what is this website why is it what <laughs> this is pretty interesting Listen, react on AWS. Let's go to the back end by first adding an API to create a note. This API will take the note object and store it in the database. Okay, create note, delete note, mouse, chords. It's proven to be a little bit more difficult. Um, all right, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if this bucket will actually be created if I run the prod command. So over here on 
this. Um, this little terminal, I'm just gonna do the prod deployment. Oh shit, this will actually deploy the new front end. I don't really care, I'm gonna do that anyway. This will probably take like five minutes, so we'll leave that here while I um I wonder if I can just use the like the like do I need to go through an API? I think I should otherwise Yeah. Okay, so we need to use Lambda to upload to S3. Using an S3, nope. This is the literally opposite of what I want. Here, upload files to S3 using serverless. Start a project, I don't know, define a resource, I don't know, copy, coding the function here. So they use AWS SDK, which I'm pretty sure is what we're using as well. AWS SDK. Yep. In my lambdas function. Excellent. Um, this is the one that sets the clicks. Actually, before that, I kind of wanted to do something where it shows the clicks before you actually click it. See right here, it doesn't show the clicks. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can make a, here, they're already doing a get handler. Oh, where is this handler? Here, post. I'm gonna create a get um, I want to call this update clicks. I'm going to call this get clicks. Is there any other mention of handler? Nope, just there. Awesome. Um, let's terminate. Oh shit. Alright, so I terminated that prod deployment midway through prod deployment. I hope it didn't break stuff, but whatever. Um, update clicks. And make another function called get clicks and oh my days and um, pretty much is just this just copy the get part and results how does it results I'll count equals results item or zero and then count is is that just returned like this twenty one return count okay um press enter to redeploy I don't know if that'll work. And then in my React app, I want to just get the count at the start. I'll do that with a. All right, I'm going to create a new component called button counter or something. Counter button. New folder. Oh, not folder. I want a file. You file um, counter button. Js. I'm gonna open that here. Make a new function counter button, and then pretty much just yoink all that code. Put it in here. Um, like that. Put it. Oh, oops. Put it in here. Import use state. Uh, and 
and then on click we'll take that as well because like ideally you don't want your app.js to have pretty much any functional code you want that all in components so boom now we now we've done that let's see if it's still there yep hmm internal server error I feel like I broke some stuff <laughs> in the server I mean it's still uploading I guess up deploying um, so we'll let that deploy um, get clicks yeah Deploying completed, sweet. Let's see if this is still broken. Damn it. <laughs> 500 error. Why is that? I don't think this will, oops. This will give me a good response. Will it here? Here, oh, good, nice. Unhandled promise rejection, runtime, handler not found. Lambda dot handler is not defined. Yeah, it's because I renamed it. Where does it say lambda dot handler? Nowhere. Should I redeploy? I'm gonna redeploy. I guess it didn't deploy properly. Uh huh. So. After, oh nice, it's created the bucket. SST, best friends, oh no. That's not the bucket I want, debug stack. What was my bucket called? Selfie bucket. Um, hmm. What are we doing next? We are making an endpoint to upload the videos. Yes, yes we are, okay. So, while that's doing that, let me create a new function called upload picture. And, 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 what happened to my Chrome with the, with, oh, yeah. And that's going to do, pretty much do this. const s3 equals new aws dot no, we could do new s3 okay Guess we'll put the bucket name in my stack. Um, Darian DeVito, thank you so much for the likes. Feel free to ask any questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, right now I'm just trying to create a image upload process on serverless stack. Sweet. Um, I'm not sure. We've we've been getting some errors. I've changed up a bunch of the backend stuff, and 
it's not been happy. It's it's giving me this internal server error. So I wonder if that, that's fixed now or not. Oh, it's taking a while. Oh, sweet! I fixed it. Excellent. Excellent. Um. Uh, I have to. I'm creating a new environment variable here now for. Wait a second, where does this even come from? Process and dot table name, table name, ah, bucket, bucket name. Sweet. Process dot and dot bucket. Whoa, why is it? They have some issue with this. String undefined is not Undefined is not very what a string. Fucking TypeScript man, I'm so shit at it. <laughs> that that fixed it. I don't know if it should have, but whatever. I don't know about this extract file either. Extract file. This error dot stack is either. Is it undefined? Object is of type unknown. Where does it even come from? G. Um, so I was copying this tutorial. Err. It's not even defined. Oh, it's the catch error. Hmm. What type is error? Axios error. Type error. Uh, I'm not. I'm not good with TypeScript. I don't know what type this is. Okay. So they have this. Oh shit! Where did I press? They have this extract file function which kind of keeps the file I want to like I don't mind renaming the file name so I'm just gonna call this current selfie um, what? for now and I feel like the data can just come in as a as a base 64 so let me try get this image data I'm not sure what I think it'll be of type here base 64 revert to data URL Image PNG. Let me just console log this. Let's see what we're kind of working with with the data, the image data. Um, I don't get how I keep losing my Chrome. Here we go. Console refresh this. Take photo. Yep, base sixty four. I feel like we can just send this to S3. I feel like we can. Let me Google this. Lambda upload base 64 to S3 here. 
Okay, Node.js, perfect. Yep. Buff. Buffer from rec.body.image binary. What? Let's just do some logs here. I think I'm going to have to redeploy this. Do I have to redeploy every time I make a function? I don't know actually. I don't know if that's that's legit. Um, let's just come console log the no traps. Thank you so much for the likes. I'm just gonna comment console oh my god console log the rec to kind of see how the data would be coming in is that complaining about the any type well keep complaining typescript i'm not good at defining types yet um and then we're gonna try to post that fetch how do i do the other fetch yeah, copy this. Fetch URI URL. Wait, what? Get app URL. Method. Hold on. We gotta create. Wait, wait. Before I do that, I actually wanted to do. Now that we got. I wanted to see if I could do. Let me deploy this again. Do the get in the counter. Counter button. So. It's gonna make make a little bit of functionality to actually show the button count before the button is even clicked. Let's see if oh my god. Let's see if I can do that here. I'll make a use effect so this code gets run at initialization of the component. Um, I'm gonna set it to fetch uh, fetch the URL but with the get and set count. Pretty simple. Let's see if it works. Um, how long, oh, I've almost been streaming for two hours now. I don't know if I should take a break here. Why don't we just go to, to four hours? Not sure. I think we'll give it another uh, more more of a go. I feel like we're kind of close. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we got a comment from Relu. Best resources to learn for someone who has a fundamental understanding of Python and experience object oriented programming. Sorry, really, I'm not too sure on what you're trying to ask here. Best resources, you mean like where to learn? Um, I'm not sure what you're trying to learn is also another question. It's like, what 
what do you want to learn for me like i always say one of the best resources for me personally is youtube it's free and there's a lot of good creators there that just like post um really good content really fast you can follow along and just like see how they've done things but i'm sorry if that doesn't answer your question i don't i don't think i understood it um 100 percent if you'd like to add some clarifying comments and maybe I can answer it better. Um, nice, looks like our SST thing is live. I'm gonna see if it shows the button count. Oh, here you said you're a first year CS student and you wanna start building projects for your resume. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I feel like YouTube is great for that. So I'll do an example for you here, like, um, you just type what you type what you want to do like for you it seems like you have experience in python and you want to continue using that so you could literally type python projects for resume and like there'll be so many nice videos here quick resume projects in python i'm sure you can finish in one weekend you know there's so many there's so much good um resources here on youtube that you could you could just copy and use in your own projects you really want to you don't really know where to go next in terms of learning yeah i mean if you're if you want to get some projects for your resume i definitely recommend looking at youtube just search python projects for your resume and you'll be able to find heaps just this one video has 12 beginner python projects maybe you don't want beginner maybe you want to do intermediate you could just type intermediate youtube has so much content right now for software developers it's amazing i really recommend it and it's free if you want to pay, you could use like Coursera or something, but I don't think that's necessary. All the good content is here on um, Coursera. I mean, YouTube. Sweet. So I've updated this to kind of show that the button has been clicked how many times before you actually click it. And I have the, I have a webcam stream and an ability to take a photo. Pretty cool. I'm going to spend another 20 minutes trying to see if I can write functionality to upload this photo to S3. Excuse me. Um, and if I can or can't, I'll probably be finishing the stream around then in 20 minutes. So feel free to ask more questions. I really love answering these. Um, I really appreciate it, Rilu, for that, that question you asked. If you have any more, go ahead. If anyone else has questions, more than happy to help help everyone out here. All right, so that's sweet. Um, let's go to my Lambda. Upload picture, okay, here. Um, I feel like this is how they've defined functions. Can I do post slash upload selfie? No worries, really. Um, is that how you do it? I am not sure. Does that build the changes? It's like there are new interfaces. Enter to redeploy. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of Google the docs here. Let's see. SST API doc here API. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Okay, great. Great, so we've made this upload selfie endpoint. Oh shit, it's called upload picture. Uh, upload selfie. Gonna have to redeploy it again. Um, that's fine. And then we'll just console log the request. Cool. Now when this is doing its thing, when we click the take photos button, we want to go to the URL plus upload selfie and post. What are we posting? What? I want to post input. URL. What? Okay, I've had a mind blank on how to fetch. 
JavaScript, JavaScript fetch post. How do you send data here? Method post headers redirect body. This is it. Is that in? In the second method. Okay. Just here. Body JSON dot stringify data. Yeah. Oh. Hold up. Hmm. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. Don't need to set count. Do then wait, what was it? And then we'll just console log the return data. Oh my bleeding. Okay. Deploying completed apparently. Let's see if it will log anything. Come take photo. Ooh. Whoa. Nice. It's, sorry. I got to sneeze. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah. It looks like it actually logged the data. Oh my days. That's excellent. I love it when things work. It's just so much better than when they don't work. So frustrating. Um, but yeah, so rec.data, that should actually be the data that we want. So if I comment out this S3 put bucket code, I can go rec.data here. This seems a bit dangerous, but fuck it. Um, does this want me to redeploy? It doesn't doesn't want me to redeploy. Okay, well, let's see if this works. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd my... Huh. Take photo. Any errors? No errors. Did it log the... Hmm, undefined rec dot body. Oh, shit. Okay, Con at least it updates without me having to redeploy. That's really cool. So const data equals rec dot body json dot parse rec dot body dot data. Hope that works. Refresh this, take photo. Oh wait, it's doing stuff. I was just getting the get. I feel like it calls this get clicks too, too many times. Anyway, I don't care. Take photo. Got the post. Let's see if it gets the value for the data. Um, the specified bucket does not exist. Huh. Oh, and the data was undefined. Man, bucket. Let's just log some more shit out here. Wait, what was it logging before? Uh. Mm. All right, out of a whole bunch of logs, take another picture. See what it logs out. 
Oh, that looks like the data. That's good. Quite a lot of it, though. Seems like a bit much. Hmm. All right, I'm going to stop logging the data. Do you reckon it's logging too many times? All right. You know that's working. So there's maybe an issue with the bucket. Um, try again. Tav Angelis, thanks for joining the stream. Selfie bucket. Sweet. Specified bucket does not exist. Okay, I have a theory that maybe we have to deploy prod for the bucket to be created. Did I call it selfie bucket? Yep, selfie bucket, new bucket, bucket name. It should work, hopefully. Um, if it doesn't work, might have to continue on another stream, unfortunately. But I think this was a productive stream. We've made a bunch of progress on the web app. It's pretty fun. Um, we'll see how it goes. Do, 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 do. Gariux, thanks for joining the stream. Feel free to ask any questions, comments. I will try to answer them. We're nearing the end here. Almost two hours streamed. I appreciate everyone who's joined and commented. Really appreciate it. How many followers do we have? Oh, we're only 28, 27 off. 5,000 followers on TikTok. That's really cool. Really cool. Um, we're just deploying to prod here. This might take a while. I'm hoping it'll fix my issues, but probably not. In the meantime, I can show you guys my AWS console to show you the pricing of, whoa, my webcam is completely fucking out. Holy shit, it's actually kind of cool. I'm gonna leave it like that. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, yeah. Wow, it's like real glitchy. It's cool, I like it. All right, so we've logged into my AWS here. Have a look at my billing dashboard. So if you look at fanfam.link, I don't know what, oh shit, we've actually uploaded it. Um, you can see the button has been clicked 97,000 times. So a good question would be, how much does that cost me in terms of like server um, resources and if we look at my AWS billing can we look at view your bill yep you can see here I zoom in a bit my essentially like the two main uh, resources that are used for this is API gateway and DynamoDB so we see we've had a hundred and seven thousand requests for the API gateway that's because every time we um, ping the the Lambda request, that's the API gateway call. And um, yeah, we do that once when we click the button to update it and also to get the, the value. Uh, Mrs. Simpson 00 has asked, what's the prod backend? The prod backend is on AWS. It consists of API gateway with Lambda. Um, running Node.js and that um, communicates with 
DynamoDB, which is the database we're using that stores all the values for the clicks and such. So you can see here we've got DynamoDB, 14 cents for um, all those 107,000 write requests and 53,000 read requests. Um, it's pretty cheap. Like, if we had a million requests, it would be a dollar twenty-five. A million API requests is a dollar on API Gateway. So, this whole thing is cost me about like thirty cents. I think this is US dollars. Yeah, it is US dollars. And then I've also bought this ten dollars comes from these two domains that I've bought. So yeah, the egress is expensive. Uh, what do you mean by that? Is egress? I thought that meant exit. Egress. The leaving of it? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, to me, it's not too expensive just for this. Outgoing network traffic. No, not really. Um, so those are pretty much like the read requests. Um, just for like this, like it's very small amounts of data being sent and received. And they actually charge it per call, I think. Request units. Oh, okay, yeah. So I guess for larger requests it would be more expensive. But for just like getting this value, um, it's pretty pretty low oh it looks like the endpoint has been updated sweet so um what was i doing yeah i'm going to check if the 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 bucket was created we can actually oh we could probably check that in my console as well let's see s3 bucket s3 let's have a look at my buckets Do I have a selfie bucket? SS could be one of these SST ones. Prod best fans app. Selfie bucket. It does exist, but the name the name is very different. Uh, I don't think I got the name correctly. Let's have a look at how do I do that. Oh, we have a question from Jay Songs. How many read requests per millisecond? Oh, like what's the limit of how many read requests you can get per millisecond? Um, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure if I can answer that. I haven't tested it. We could go to CloudWatch and see, so CloudWatch is kind of like the logging um, actually the throttle, the throttle will probably be DynamoDB let's have a look I think you can scale it by paying more but um, I should have a table. A thousand units a second seems to be the most on here. A transactional read request requires two read capacities. And okay, so according to this, DynamoDB can handle more than 10 trillion requests per day and support peaks of more than 20 million requests per second. Hope that answers your question, Jay Songs. Um, yeah, so I was seeing if the bucket name, if this still complains about the bucket name. Um, looks like it didn't even send. Let's try again. 
There we go. Selfie bucket does not exist. Yeah, because the name isn't actually selfie bucket. It's actually something really weird. So I'm, s I'm wondering if we can get that from their API. Hmm. It says the second parameter is ID and I have put the second parameter as selfie bucket, but I guess it didn't work. Hmm. So, control F for name. Let's see what we find here. Bucket name. Bucket name. An instance of bucket contains the following property. Oh, sweet. Okay. I think I can fix this. Uh huh. Here. Bucket name is bucket dot bucket name. Boom, that should fix it. That should fix it. Bucket, bucket name, bucket, bucket name, bucket, bucket name. I'm just gonna change this back. Okay, enter to redeploy. Boom, zero dot HTML, thanks for joining the stream. Feel free to ask any questions, guys. Please support me by following me on TikTok or subbing to my YouTube or Twitch if you're on Twitch. That would be greatly appreciated. We're almost there. I feel like we're, we're after I deploy this, we might actually be able to upload images to S3. That would be super cool. After that, we'll do some styling maybe because as you can see, the styling on this looks kind of trash, but a great way to develop is to focus on functionality first and then styling later. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for this to redeploy and hopefully it will work. After we figured out how to upload the web app, we need to be able to show it for other people. But that's to do. Nice, it's Almost done. Gotta remove this old plan. Make it easier to read. Okay. Checking deploying status. Let's go. Almost deployed. Any second now. Deploying completed. Sweet. All right. Let's see what it says. Hopefully, no complaints. Take photo. Any complaints? Nothing yet. Nice, it's got the actual name. Sweet. I think it worked. Let's check our bucket. Oh shit. Where is here? No. Here. Aha. Here. S3. Ba, ba, ba. Where is my selfie bucket here? No objects. Ah. Well, at least it didn't complain that we didn't have 
objects. Um, okay. Did it complain about anything? Oh, here. Failed to send a response because the function timed out. Oh, that's no good. Access denied. She looks like the lambda doesn't have permissions. That's something we could probably fix up here because we know we gave the permissions table to the API, but can we give permissions bucket to the API? Is that what we needed to do? Probably. Let's do that. Enter the redeploy. This is like, I don't know. I don't know if this is good or bad. It's kind of annoying. It's something I expected from SST and that is that um, pretty much every time you make like a backend change, you have to deploy. And that takes at least 10 seconds, like on average, maybe 20, 30 seconds. So like, I don't know, maybe even more. I feel like it, the last one took like a couple minutes. Kind of slows down the development process. Um, before using SST, I would use the serverless CLI and it had something called a plugin called serverless offline which would actually, well, not for all resources, come to think of it, but it would like, for Lambda at least, oh, I guess this does it for Lambda too, so it's not really a difference. I was gonna say, it like emulates the resources offline, so it makes kind of like um, deploying, it, you just don't have to deploy, it would be a lot faster, but, but, but yeah, come to think of it, like you couldn't really do that with DynamoDB um, you, you, you'd only really do that with Lambda and it, SST doesn't make you have to redeploy the whole like API gateway Lambda situation either. So, so it's pretty much the same thing. So no complaints there anymore. I mean, complaints on the whole system, but no complaints comparing SST to serverless dev. All right, deploy completed. Let's see if it complains now. Take photo. Um, and give it five seconds to see if that does anything. Nope. All right, we'll refresh. Yep. And oh, it's doing it. I think I. Oh, status code two hundred. That's a very good sign. Let's see. Open my bucket. Refresh. Is there an object here? Still no objects, dude. The freak. Let me try one more time. Another one. See what it says now. I'm expecting to see like an object in this selfie bucket. Is that what it's called? Oh no, I'm looking at the prod bucket. We need to actually look at SST best fans selfie bucket. Yes, card selfie. Hey, that's awesome. I should probably call it current selfie dot PNG. PNG. Oh, we don't support this file format. What do you mean, dude? Let me open it with. VS code or something. Oh, I need to sneeze again. I've been sneezing so much. <coughs> oh my god. Where is VS code? Here. Hmm. No, what? That's good. Why does it have issues? Um, where's the file name here? Current selfie. Not PNG. Um, doesn't 
doesn't seem to need us to redeploy, so we'll just try again here with a smile. Upload that. Have a look at the bucket and um, probably delete the old current selfie. How long does this take? I feel like it's should be faster. Huh. Didn't didn't work. I need to make this public. No, not really. I could just call it from the lambda. Um, I'm wondering why the dot png didn't work. I'll try this one more time. You have to deploy? Yeah, you think so? I I thought that for the lambda functions it like automatically does it. But um I appreciate the comment, Bubba King. I will try deploy after this. I just thought I didn't have to deploy for lambda changes. Nope. Alright, I'm deleting this and redeploying. Um, Unique Yuli, thanks for joining the stream. All right, another deploy. This has been so annoying. Like, I probably spent at least fifteen minutes waiting for stuff to deploy. I try to like utilize my time by doing something else while stuff is deploying. But what could I do? Well, we need to get the image. So I could do a get. So there's two ways I could do the image get. One is to get it straight from the URL from the bucket. And that would require me making the bucket kind of, yeah, let's try to do that. That'd be a lot simpler. Making the bucket, um, Making the bucket public. I mean, I could make it only pub, kind of public to. All right, it's finished. Let's let's try this again. Take the photo. Um, wait for it to upload. Seems like it's taken a little while. Oh, it's pretty much done. Should, I think I normally get like a status 200. Yep. Oh no, failed to send a response because it timed out. No. Oh, but it still worked. But it's not .png. What? it's the key oh does that need to be dot png maybe that's why uh -huh. let's try that again i feel like that should be it let's go no whoops yep Feeling confident about this. It's gonna work this time. We're gonna have a current selfie.png. Damn, it's still giving a failed response. Which is sad. Yes. At least we got the PNG. Let's go. Does it uh, does it show the image? No. We don't support this file format. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Um
Google, please help. Yeah. Replace what? Really? Should we try this? Buffer from body buff. Huh. See, I'm going to look at at least one other post. Fuck is this? No, I don't want all these libraries. Alright, shit, we're just going to try that first one. Okay. So, what do they do? They create. This is like I feel like this is it doesn't need to be this complex. Const buff equals buffer from da da dot replace the name just change all that da da dot image ours is what is ours? It's not just straight image, it's it is. Oh, it is. It's image. Okay. We'll keep that. We will keep that. That's not what I copied. Base sixty four, and then they are making the body the buff and content encoding base sixty four. Okay, let's try that. Take the photo, let it do its thing. Upload selfie invoked. And um, status code 200, but also the failed timeout. I'm just ignoring the failed timeout because it seems to be uploading correctly. Let's see what the file looks like now. Please work. Yes! Woo! We did it! We uploaded it, the file correctly. Okay. Now. Is this public? Is this URL? public if I go into an incognito window and try to open this image what would happen oh it works sweet okay um, um, now this I know this isn't the prod link but I'm just gonna use it for testing gonna open app.js it's gonna create an image src equals the current selfie <laughs> I just put it there will that work oh my god it works that's sick all right so now anyone can go in and, <laughs> and, and take a photo and update the current selfie wait I don't think it'll refresh will it no, it won't. How do we get that to refresh? Um, oh no, react refresh image. Huh. Key 
key date dot now. All right, we'll just add a key with <laughs> key equals image key. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna put this on the video stream, just above it, and uh, I'm gonna make a hook called image key. which will initialize a zero and then every time every time they return I don't know if it even returns but let's pretend they do we'll set image key date new date dot now Okay, what's this complaining about? Image elements must have an alt prop. Okay, I can do that. Can I find image key? Image key. Alt current selfie. Okay. Refresh. Yeah, guard selfie. Sick. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to go to the prod bucket and upload my current selfie. Where is the prod bucket? Prod my selfie bucket upload. Can I change the name? It's fine. I'll change it later. Okay, so now we have the current selfie in prod. Can I change the name here? Rename current selfie. Excellent. Um, awesome. Now I'm just going to do some CSS here to just make this look a bit nicer. How do we want to do this? I want to put this whole thing good way to do CSS is to just do it in your inspector before you actually write it um, so yeah we got this video component display flex flex direction column how does that look a bit interesting a bit interesting there's all this space between it. What is this canvas? Do we need the canvas? That's a good question. Hold on. I feel like we don't need the canvas. Wait, that didn't even update the photo like I thought it would. Because the key should be changed. Hmm. Oh, it just takes a while. Right? No, still didn't change. Um, video stream. Here. Updated. Wait, do we have another console log here? Oh, we don't need that. Okay. Is there gonna is it gonna say updated? It doesn't. It's because the timeout, I mean the return. It even says here it times out before it can return. So there's something wrong. There's something wrong with this. Oh wait return oh never mind it did say updated it just took took forever but the SRC didn't change hmm that is a bit annoying Like, um, 
Yeah, how do we get an image to reload with the, with the same URI? Oh, you had a meaningless query parameter to the URI. Oh, that's what that dude was doing, and I misunderstood. So we could do like this. No, this needs to be a backtick. Why is that not happy? Huh? <coughs> oh, maybe because of that. All right, there we go. Uh, whoop. Yeah, so you just had a meaningless query here. Time equals image key. We don't even need this key here. All right, I think that should work. Let's have a let's have a test here. I should add a um, loading thing as well, just for better UX. But if this says updated here, this image should update now. In my opinion. Let's see. It's super slow. I mean, date.now is not a constructor. The fuck does that mean? It's not a constructor. New date.now. Oh, it's probably sh should be like this. Let's try that again. Um, okay, how do I add a loading? Add a hook. Uploading. False. And then take photo. Set uploading to true. What was this? Intermediate value out now is not a function. Oh my god. What am I doing wrong here? This is just date dot down, you don't need new. Huh. Guess that's probably accurate. And after it sets that we'll set uploading to false again. But while it's uploading, we're gonna do this. Uploading uploading okay so I'll just say that it's uploading while it's uploading let's have a look <laughs> what did it hide I feel like it <laughs> oh no that's the canvas I don't want it to show the canvas ever. Hmm. Or maybe I do. Oh, sweet. It, it did it. It did it. That's awesome. Um, hide the canvas. Hide the canvas in style. That's what we need to do now. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. What? Why? Why didn't it work when I did uh, style equals equals wait equals visibility hidden? Does that make it not work? Uploading. Let's see. No, it does work still. Sick. All right, we'll keep that. Um, we're gonna put this whole thing in display flex, flex, dire, flex direction column. Justify content center. 
Why is there space between? I don't want space between. Ooh. It should just um no wait hold on hmm now these seem to make a difference so, uh, mm. why is this? Why is there big gaps? Why is there big gaps? Should I just not worry about the style? Okay, I'm gonna just not worry about the styling and just leave it like this for now. Um, yeah, we'll do the styling later. Alright guys, thanks for watching the stream. I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys learned something or enjoyed it or both. Hope you have a good day. See you later.